Today, we're gonna to talk to you about our experience with halter training calves. How many calves have we halter trained so far? Like three, basically, right? Yeah. And we've actually, I think, done a great job on it because some of the calves we've given away, or I mean, not given away, we've sold that have left our possession have been praised for their disposition and tameness by people who actually know cattle. All right, now this is the newest calf, Texas, the bull calf. And we are starting to halter train him, and I should say Grace is starting to halter train him earlier than any other calf. He is only two weeks old, and he is on about day three of being halter broken. And he's fighting it. This is how it goes when you start. He just tugs and tugs. He's not doesn't like it. And this calf, he put me on the butt the other day in the pasture, trying to get his halter on him. You want to try to switch it? I don't think. So. All right, this is stage one of halter training, right? It kind of looks like this. The calf stands head down, won't do anything for you. Will just stand there and hates it, right? Oh, yeah. And then uh, a couple days in, maybe today you can actually get him to lead a little bit and take steps on his own. Gentle pressure. We give Grace has done this a lot. You give a gentle pressure, and then when they come, you actually reward them by not dragging them. So they come to you as long as they walk to you. You let the pressure off. And this is a way to actually reward the calf in this really subtle way, and they get it because they don't like that pressure. So they pull, they pull, they pull. They'll hang back on you like this. And as soon as they step into you, you let that pressure off. And if they walk towards you, you let the pressure completely off. And as a reward, it really works in their heads. So right now he's just leaning on you. And I'm but leaning is, on him. Is he stepping into it and coming towards you at all? So. There you go. You don't have to lean back. You can just stand there and it can be okay. You don't have to pull. See? Easy peasy. And then you can give a little pressure and kind of start it back over and he'll step into it for the reward of not having that pressure. Earlier he did a flip. He did the jersey flop 2.0. He did the jersey flop. He'll, he'll just, they'll just lay down on the ground and be like, I'm dead, I'm gonna die. He literally just lay down and And that's in the first days. It really changes quickly where this is very, very early. And what this stage is, is him learning the halter's not gonna kill him and two, he can't get off of it once he's on it. Um, and that, after you get through that, then you actually will be leading your calf around slowly through the yard. And it's really, it's a cool process because it goes from this very unnatural thing, um, they know it's unnatural, they hate it, to you're leading a calf around, it's following you, it's coming to you. Um, it's a cool little process. I know, you don't like this, but it, this part is, this. you'll get over this part really soon, I promise. You'll learn that we're not here to hurt you and the halter doesn't hurt you and you can actually kind of hang out with us it's okay one of the big differences between working with a heifer and this bull calf is working with the bull calf is honestly for us to keep things chill and under control for the next 18 months um, until we will butcher that bull calf soon to be a steer um, and put him in our freezer so it's not because we need him to be perfectly halter trained because we need him to do this. We don't really need him to be tame enough to get in and out of milking stand, to uh, be handled a whole bunch. We just want him tame enough that if we need to, we can grab him, catch him, and you know, lead him somewhere. It like doesn't- Like we sold him instead of eating him. Yeah, so yeah, if we sold them so we can go out in the pasture, catch them, get them on a trailer. So it's really more of a convenience for us that he's gentled. So um, it's also a great learning ex uh, experience for Grace and for any of the other kids who want to get in on it, how to halter train a calf. Okay, so mommy's not here. He's not going to like this, but he's going to hang out on the halter for just a little while, and then we'll let him back with his mom. Okay, so the, the giveaway ends on the 7th, and both of them will be for sale on the 8th of this month, December. Okay, sounds great. Thank you. I'm going to jump off. Okay. All right, bye.
You may have heard me talking about this project I've been working on with my brothers. It's a brand, we launched it, it's called Harken Home. Our first product was a barnwood sign we made out of that barn right there. We only made like 50 of them though, so we weren't able to sell very many. We have a cool announcement. Today, we're launching a giveaway for our two new products, a beautiful, small, handmade birdhouse decoration. We're envisioning it hanging on Christmas trees all around the country and a beautiful handmade macrame placemat. We're selling these in sets of four. We really enjoyed using them in our kitchen. Check out the link in the description for your chance to win one or both of these. It might seem kind of cruel, but one of the steps early in the process, instead of just fighting the calf um, and having him associate that experience with us personally, we'll take him and we'll tie him to a strong object, obviously where we can observe him so that he doesn't hurt himself or hang himself, and we'll let him fight that object. So you did this, what, the other day? Did you yeah, do this the other day? Twice. Uh, so the first two days, that's pretty much what you were doing. What did he do during those days? He just flips around, sometimes he falls down. When he falls down, you have to help him because yeah. he can't really, like lean back to get up. Yeah. So he could choke himself. So, um, and he's doing it right now. Basically, he fights it. And I think it's better for him to fight an inanimate object than it is for him to fight us and have that associated directly with us. So he fights the halter. Calf will get over this, sometimes in a day, sometimes in two days. Um, and I'm not talking about whole days, I'm talking about like short sessions where you tie him up, let him fight it. Do that a few times when you start your session and the calf will quit fighting because he knows he can't break away. And that's what he's hoping is if I keep tugging on this over and over and over, I'll break it. It's not gonna break. His ears go back when you pet him. He's like, no. But he's kind of chill when his ears are all up forward and he's like looking around. Yeah. He's so tiny. We've kind of taught ourselves, honestly, how to break calves. We've talked to people, a friend who um, he actually shows cattle and has uh, breeds and raises. Um, Highlands, he he introduced me to the idea of just tying them out to start with and so you're not fighting them, you tie them out, you watch them and guess what? That is a huge portion, you know, make sure they can ha have some water, put them out there um, and let them figure it out, right, just them and the halter and a tree. Um, and when we started doing that, I think was with our second steer, turned out really, really good and made the, um, it made our interactions with the calf much more calm and kind of got over that portion where you're playing a tug of war, which it, you really want to avoid that. You don't want them to think that they're in a tug of war match. And the thing is, if you start later and you don't do the tie out method and you do the tug of war method, guess what happens? You're going to lose the tug of war. Been there, done that. And when you lose the tug of war, then you've just undone a lot of, um, you've stepped backwards a long ways because then the calf thinks in his head for the next hundred times he's gonna try, I can break away if I try enough times. Um, and so you definitely wanna avoid that working with a larger uh, calf. You know, I've seen people, um, a lot of people start later, even six months and a year on a calf, halter training it. You can't hold back that um, a year old steer you can't hold it back if you're a small person you're gonna get dragged or of course you're gonna let go of that rope he'll sit like this the whole time the first time he just sat that way and then sometimes he'll just randomly like jump buddy you're not gonna win i promise you'll figure this out really soon so what 10 more minutes we'll let him out of here we probably need to head out you're not going to win, and, and the halter is also not hurting you. It doesn't choke you. It just doesn't feel good on your face, and you can't run and play. So, again, to those who are thinking that this looks cruel, just tying them out and watching them, the thing is, the alternatives. If you've never had a steer or a calf on a halter 
the first day they're on halter, you don't really get this because the alternative is one, fighting them, or two, dragging them. And being mean to them. Yeah, which in my view is actually more cruel than just letting them sit there and figure out. It's simple. He's just figuring out. It doesn't hurt him. It's not choking him. He has to figure out, oh, this thing on me that feels weird and I don't like, guess what? Can't break it. I can't break free. Yeah. Um, and if I stay on it, I'll get petted. And yeah. And then, and then we'll progress to treats too. And he doesn't, I mean, he's just on milk now. He's not, we wouldn't even give him grain right now. Uh, you don't give him grain at all, do you? Yeah. I don't think he'd even eat it. So I don't really know of treats. The treat is like, here's your little session. You go back, you nurse on mama. But this is what it looks like on day three. Um, sometimes the first week is going to look like this. If we try to lead him right now, show me trying to lead him just for, just to help people understand. All right, Shep is here. This kind of is a little curveball. He will not hurt the calf. Um, we know he's been around. He's been around calves a lot, but he's probably going to freak it out. So Shep, let's go. Come on, go away. Come over here. Um, the curveball is added fear for the calf. I mean, the dog is just wants to get in there and sniff and play is curious, but for a little bull calf, this is that is not cool to be approached by a canine. You know, cows know dogs are hunters, and cows know that cows can be prey. Okay, show me what leading him looks like. All right, lead him. <laughs> He's doing better than he did on day one. But this is this is generally where leading leads. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. Wow, he's actually doing better than day one. He's running from you. He's running from me. Okay, I'm just gonna stand here and film. You show me what leading looks like. Lead him across the yard. It's on the wrong side, so it's harder to lead actually. He's actually doing really good. Yeah, there you go. But usually what he does, he lean and then he jumps like like that. Yeah. He's actually doing really, really good. But I, I think it's because this is day three, not day one. Okay, so I was trying to show you how hard it is to lead him. <clears throat> but I really think as a result of two sections he's had before this, he's actually leading easier. Because typically what a calf does, the first time you get them on the halter and you try to lead them or give any influence as to what where they're going they will stop they'll they will dig their feet into the ground and they'll lean back i'm actually kind of shocked by how well he's doing today but this is what it looks like when he doesn't want to go with you but see he's following you that's amazing and he's wagging his tail like that's a happy look that is revolt <laughs> oh well you're right that might be but if he's walking after you, that's amazing for day three. Sorry. Bye. All right. Almost there. All right, Grace is saying that he's getting tired. She's just watching his behavior and he's starting to get really unruly. So she's saying, session over. We're not going to do that. Let him back starts, to his mom. Yeah, if he's fighting me when I'm taking him out, I'm just gonna stop. Like, okay, no, you're not actually winning. I'm letting you go. Yeah. I like it. I think that's smart to end it before it gets crazy. Yeah, because that's what happened with her. She's huge and she just gets crazy. Yeah. All right, guys, thanks for joining us as we are working on halter training this little bull calf. Um, and just kind of seeing what we're doing in the process, seeing a little glimpse into our daily routine with the cows and what it looks like to halter train a calf. It's really fun. It's a fun interaction to have with a cow. It is um, nuanced. You learn a lot about yourself and I'm so happy that my kids on our place have been able to have this experience, especially uh, Grace has, but I'm hoping to introduce a uh, joyful, justice maybe even brighten a little bit and let them actually walk into the experience hoping grace can actually um, teach them and kind of pass it along because you learn a ton when you train 
the calf. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon. All right, goodbye.